keeping up with our motto let learning be joy and teaching a pleasure your we are with remote teaching and learning process to bridge the gap happy learning students yeah mrs sonal shadoshi from thakur vidya mandir high school and junior college teaching you all geography today for grade 6 chapter 5 temperature today we are going to learn part 1 Before going through the chapter, let's do one experiment. Take a torch light and keep it stable by one place. Take two large paper sheets, large enough to accommodate its entire beam. Paste the papers on two flat boards. Then hold the board. perpendicular to beam that is 90 degree draw a outline draw an outline of the area lit up by the beam name the paper a so that will be your paper a now use the another paper hold it in such a way that it makes the angle of 120 degree with the beam shown in figure 5.1b draw the outline of the area occupied by the beam name the paper b now observe both paper a and paper b after observation just answer the following questions on which paper does the beam occupy a larger area The answer you will get is the beam occupies a large area on the paper that is held in such a way that it makes an angle of 120 degree with the beam. On which paper is the area smaller? Answer is the area is smaller on the paper that is held in such a way that it makes an angle of 90 degree with the beam. Next step is to change the angle between the beam of light and the paper. Observe the change that occur in the area occupied by the beam of light. What is the relation between the angle of the paper and the area occupied by the beam? Yes, when the angle of the paper with the beam is of less degree, the area occupied by the beam is smaller. On the other hand, when the angle of the paper with the beam is more degree the area occupied by the beam is larger now back to the chapter let's relate this example with sun and the planet earth think the torch light as the sun rays and your paper as the places on the earth now sun rays coming towards the earth travel in straight lines however as the earth is spherical in shape these are not perpendicular to all the parts of the earth surface in some parts they are perpendicular whereas in other parts they are slanting let us see that effect it has on the earth you can see in second picture that sun rays are falling straight from the equator to 23 and 1/2 degree north and 23 and 1/2 degree south that is from the tropic of cancer to the tropic of capricorn sun rays are falling directly on the planet earth now as i told you the perpendicular rays occupy less area shown in figure 5.1a the part where the rays occupy lesser area receive bright sunshine and greater heat hence the surface gets heated more and the air becomes hotter so in previous slide we have seen which part of the earth, planet earth receives the bright sunshine so from the tropic of cancer to the tropic of capricorn 
Second thing, the slant rays occupy a larger area that is shown in figure 5.1b. In this area, sunlight appears less bright and there is less heat. Hence, the surface there gets less heated and the air too is less hot. You can see in second picture that rays are falling slanting near the poles. So students, what do you understand? So the region marked A in figure 5.2 receive perpendicular rays while the region marked B receives slant rays and in the region marked C the rays are extremely slanting. Using a scale, just measure the length of the tip up portions on the earth's surface in A, B and C regions. Measure the width of the ray shown between the earth and the sun. So, considering the parallels of latitude marked in figure, tell the regions where the temperature will become high, moderate and low. So, as we have seen, the temperature will be high in the regions receiving perpendicular sun rays, that is, near the Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn and Equator. The temperature will be moderate in the regions receiving slant rays, that is, from Tropic of Cancer to 66 and half degree north, and from Tropic of Capricorn to 66 and half degree south. The temperature will be low in the regions receiving extremely slanting rays, that is, near the regions near the poles that is from 66 and half degree north to the north pole and 66 and half degree south to the south pole. So we can conclude that sun rays falling on the earth are straight and parallel to each other. However, we have seen that due to the spherical shape of the earth and the resultant curvature of the surface, they occupy the larger or lesser area. This leads to the unequal distribution of the heat received from the sun, resulting in decreasing temperature from equator to the north and south poles. Based on the distribution of temperature, the earth can be divided into torrid, temperate and polar regions. Torrid regions are the regions where there is extreme heat that is from north, uh, from Tropic of Cancer to the Tropic of Capricorn that is 23 and half degree north to 23 and half degree south. Temperate or moderate regions are the regions from 23 and half degree north to 66 and half degree north and from 23 and half degree south to 66 and half degree south where sun, sun rays falls little slant. Now polar regions, those are 66 and half degree north to north pole and 66 and half degree south to south pole where sun rays fall extremely slant. So the three type of climatic zones are torrid zone, temperate zone and polar zone. We can also say warm zone, moderate zone and cold zone. Now, what are the factors affecting temperature on the planet Earth that we will see in the next class? Here is just a short description of that. Though latitude is the main factor there are other factors also which influence the distribution of temperature. However, their effects are limited to particular regions and those factors are nearness through the sea, means altitude, then continentality, height above the sea level and physical setup of regions. These factors we will see in the next part of this chapter. Let us revise some questions regarding what we have done till now.
so first question is how will the rays fall between 0 degree and 23 and half degree north and south so as i told you sun rays fall directly on this area so between 0 degree and 23 and half degree north and south the sun rays are perpendicular as this effect it the area receives bright sunlight and greater heat therefore this area is known as torrid zone or warm zone the second question how will the rays fall between 23 and half degree and 66 and half degree north and south so the sun rays over this area are slanting as the effect these areas receive little less bright sunlight and less heat therefore known as moderate or temperate zone third question how will the how will the rays fall between 6 and 66 and half degree north and south towards the poles to 90 degree north or south so the sun rays are extremely slant over here as the effect this area receive extremely less bright sunlight and extremely less heat and therefore these areas are known as frigid zones or cold zones now true or false in order to understand the climatic climate of a region the latitudinal extent is more useful than longitudinal extent so this statement is true as latitude distribute the planet earth in three equal climatic zones those are warm zone moderate zone and cold zone also known as torrid zone temperate zone and frigid zone whereas longitudes help us to decide time zone of the particular place on the globe thank you all